Hi, this is Nate from Remotely Interesting. Today we have a Ford TX Ranger and we're installing an EGR blocking plate to the EGR valve. Now you probably took one look at the engine bay and went, where the is this EGR valve located? We're going to access it from the top of the engine bay, somewhere in there. Now the most common question is, why can't you put the blocking plate on the intake side of the EGR valve? As you can see here, the pipe that goes into the intake manifold is quite long, so you can't just insert the plate between the two faces. This point here is where we want to block off the EGR valve with the blanking plate. If you block it off at the intake side of the EGR valve, you're defeating the purpose of putting in a blocking plate in the first place. Here you can see the electric motor activated valve inside the EGR. If we don't block it off before this point, the gases will still come through, gunk and clog up your EGR and cause the valve to stick open. This is another reason to put the plate at the intake of the EGR valve. First thing we're going to do is loosen the top intake hose of the EGR return. You need an eight millimeter spanner and there is two bolts. For this job, I'm using ratcheting spanners. You can use an eight millimeter traditional ring spanner, socket, or open-ended spanner. But at the EGR valve, you're definitely going to need a 10 millimeter ratcheting ring spanner. Otherwise, the job's going to be pretty much impossible. Here is the EGR blanking plate. I think I got it off of eBay. It doesn't matter where you buy them from or how thick they are, but I do recommend getting it in stainless steel so it does last the life of your vehicle. The thickness doesn't really matter. Exhausts are made of anything from 1.2 to 1.6 millimeter steel. So anything between there is fine. If it's stainless steel, it's going to last the life of your vehicle, no matter how thick it is. Here's an under vehicle view of the EGR valve you'll be working with. As you can see, it's pretty much impossible to access with your arms from under the vehicle. So that's why we'll be working from the engine bay side. Once the two 10 millimeter bolts have been loosened, this is where you will slip the plate between the two housings. Now from the engine bay side, this is where the EGR valve is located. And on this end, is where we're going to put the blocking plate. Here's a view from the rear of the EGR valve and the two 10 millimeter bolts that you'll need to loosen. Now you need to loosen the bottom bolt on the EGR housing from the top of the engine bay. See the angle of attachment required for the ratchet spanner. This will help you out a lot. You did get a ratchet spanner, didn't you? Otherwise, you're going to be here for about three hours. The bolt might be a little bit tight, but it can be loosened with just one hand and the spanner with small motions. This should only take you a few minutes at the most. Once the bolt was cracked with the spanner, it was actually quite easy to loosen by hand. It only needs to be undone a few turns, just enough to get the plate in. Now on to the top bolt. See the angle required to fit the ratchet spanner. The top bolt is probably a little more tricky and may require both hands. One to hold the spanner onto the bolt and one to crack and turn. Now it's time to install the plate between the housings. 
Some one-handed persistence is required and be careful it doesn't fall out like mine did when doing up the bolts again. I ended up completely removing the bolts from the intake pipe at the top so I can get a bit more wiggle room to get the plate in. As you can see, once you have enough room, the plate goes in fairly easily. Considering I'm holding the camera, trying to show you guys what's happening, it's pretty good. You should now be able to tighten both bolts up by hand. Don't look away because the plate will jump out while you're not looking. Make sure you get the bolts done up as tight as you can before you grab your spanner. As you can see, mine got out and this time I'm not taking my eyes off it until I grab my spanner and get those bolts done up tight. Okay, this ain't gonna happen while I'm holding the camera. So I'm gonna shut off here and get these bolts done up. Man, I'm glad that's done. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helps you gain an insight on installing the blocking plate with less effort. I couldn't find any other videos doing this on YouTube, so I decided to give back to you guys and make this one. Good luck. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe.